at the very minimum. Okay, so the last thing we're going to cover is Amang's POV. Anyway, I talk about Amang. He's a really entertaining uh, tank to watch because he plays Hammond. Yeah, let's see how he plays against Parry the Null. This was three days ago, if I'm not wrong. Come on, come on. I think this is Oasis. The first match is Oasis. Alright. Doesn't stop his momentum at all, literally. So I think, yeah, you know, oh. maybe even stronger on that hero now. And on the other side of things, the Paris Eternal, they'll be their opponents today. A team who looks different now than they did in stage one. So coaching changes made. Demon goes over towards the Dallas Fuel. And now we start to see a couple more of these players come out of the wood. Obviously, not in the over. Now he's. Start, start, start. Inside. The way he thinks about the game is, is it definitely interesting. All right, he's got to pass what this. Oh, yes. All right, so Paris come out here with. Um, a bit of a 2 2 2 of their own. Okay, so Chengdu starts with like a, a Hammond, Zen, Mercy, and starts with Farah, Sombra, and Sunday 6. And you know, that many different triple DPS configuration. You have like the, 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 the Tracer, Sombra, and Farah. So you have something like this, where this is a Tracer, Tracer, Sombra, and Farah. You have like the, the Farah Widow. You could play Widow here. Farah, Widow, Sombra. Uh, oh, maybe this can play a Widow. So most of the time, if you want to play a Farah, you normally play a Sombra. And this will be like the third flex DPS, right? So if you're definitely playing the Sombra and the Farah, the third DPS is sort of like a flex. You could play a Tracer. You could play a Widowmaker in the slot. You could play uh, a 76. You could play... Uh, you know, you, I've, you normally you don't play Genji because Genji is not very self-sufficient. Like Genji requires a lot of resources, so generally it's seven six because you you have like a way you have the way to run around, right? Widowmaker, you have grapple hook, uh, and and tracer. So let's continue. So like just because just cause Chengdu is running this right, you sort of know where they're gonna set up. So you have like Hammond playing right here. You probably want two different angles, right? You have one multiple angles. You have like Farah shooting from one side, maybe seventy six shooting from another side, and from Paris Eternal, this is really just uh protect the Macri. This is literally protect the Macri. So you'll see Soon doing all the work and everyone else is making sure that Soon stays protected. The only reason why you run like a Mercy is because you want to pocket Soon. And the only reason why you run an uh, NI is so you can heal the tank. So you'll probably see a lot of like uh, crews pocketing Soon and Grey just healing everyone else. So crews won't be healing much, probably will be pocketing Soon a little bit more. I've been on the Brigitte, so he's still... Who has the better matchup? Oh, it's really hard to say. Because this is a relatively rare composition. Let's just watch the match and we'll see how, how it pans out. What's your answer to what SR a coach needs to be? Surely the game knowledge can be picked up from observing just as much as playing. And the only thing they would lack is the decision making that's affected. Yeah, but uh, I mean, yeah, yeah, no, I, I totally agree. I guess it's just, it's more likely that a coach wouldn't be like uh, a coach with enough knowledge if he's bronze, right? So... I mean, if I see a bronze player and, and, and this bronze player wants to be, a, say, a contender's coach, then, I mean, I'm, 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 you, you, you definitely get... I mean, if this guy has, like, a lot of portfolio, you're still kind of curious, I guess. It means nothing, but there must be a reason he's bronze. Most of the time, the reason he's bronze has nothing to do with his understanding of the game. It's generally because he's been playing with his laptop. I have literally met someone playing with a trackpad, like a laptop trackpad at 40 FPS. And the guy is like, he's not even bronze. He's like 2.5K. Right, a laptop trackpad. Look, I don't even know whether I can hit... I don't think I can hit 2,500 if I play on a laptop with a trackpad. So, at 40 FPS. So, kudos to him, I guess. I'll be... I don't even know what I'll play. Mercy? I, I don't know. What, what's the easiest character? I, I don't even think I can play a Moira because I, I, I can't track. I can't track with a freaking trackpad. So, yeah, if this guy is bronze, then I'm going to assume that he's bronze because of uh, extended waiting circumstances and, and nothing to do with like maybe bad internet nothing to do with his game knowledge because I think it's been said a lot of times as long as you have like a dec half decent knowledge of um, of uh, Overwatch you, you will tend you will tend to be if you you will tend to be relatively high rank so it's kind of like a it's not a cause and consequence thing it's just it's more possible you are high you are relatively high rank if you are a coach because of all the game knowledge you have yeah, I haven't met like a bronze contenders coach. I have met many grandmasters coaches. I've met many masters coaches. I've met quite a fair share of diamond coach, a few plat coach, but I've never, I don't think I've ever met anything lower than plat in 
trial and uh, trials and above. So tier two scene. Yeah. Change to that role at least for now. I, I think it's just really unlikely. There, there probably is like some outlier guy somewhere like Go or Silver, but it, it's unlikely. Yeah. On a long flank, usually you don't see this. He's got all the way underneath. I think the best coaches will always be able to apply themselves to the to the game. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Gears. Hey, hey, oh, nice Sprinted to see you. All the way through the bottom. Oh, flank. Okay, so this is really interesting, right? So one of the things that Eamon does, and I think a lot of Hammond learned, picked this up really, really quickly, is he always goes for a poke. You would think, right? Eamon is like a, a Hammond. What does Hammond do? Row in and power driver, right? It's easy. It's easy clap. You see the team, just whoop, just hook in and power driver. If any of you guys right, play Hammond right now, and assuming there's no Hammond one trick among Twitch chat, uh, I'm going to assume that if you play Hammond, if you play Hammond, right, you're just going to go in and power driver. Like straight away, you hook in and power driver. But, you know, being a, a good heaven player, being one of them, an Overwatch League tier heaven, like being Amen, right, Amen, this guy right here is Alpha male right here. He knows when he needs to go in, he knows when he doesn't need to go in. So, he's, he's unlikely to go in, because if he goes in right now, right, Soon is going to flashbang him, uh, Shadowburn uh, Brick is going to bash him. So what he's going to do is just to poke, right? Poke, wait for opportunity, wait for setup. One of the things about Hammond is you reach the point really quickly as well. So right here, when Hammond rolls to the point, right, when Hammond rolls to this area, it's likely that you are set up in position like three to five seconds before your team is even in position. So everyone here, maybe they're still strolling in. So you got to wait for everyone to set up as well. So Aiming, as he plays in this particular area, he's also waiting for everyone to set up. Speak to that role, at least for now. Okay, so we know that the fire is behind him. Yeah. Going on a long flank. Usually you don't see this. So when does he want to power driver in? Hmm. I think if if like Jingmu if Jingmu hit hits a couple of shots, I think he might go it they might go in. Uh if Elsa gets a hack, they can go in. Uh if anyone if anyone here drops to like half HP, they might they might go in as well. But it's unlikely. I think the most like the most the best way to go in is probably if he if he hits a hack or if like Farah gets Far gets like a barrage, which is, which is also unlikely. So most of the, I think it's a very likely that Paris. It's very likely that Paris captured a point, and then for the next 10, 20 seconds, while Paris has the point, Chengdu tries to get something, but yeah, unless Chengdu makes a pick. He's yeah. got all the way underneath, sprinted all the way through the bottom, trying to go all the way around. Even so Finzi actually kills kill. We we didn't get to see how that happens. It's probably just callous, I guess. I'll have to use this res here early. Jimmy's down. See, and soon got Jingmu. Yeah, yeah and, and that's not easy, right? It's not just you play a hit scan, you counter the foul. Look, look at look at the foul. Trying to go all the way around. Even so Do you see how fast he dies? Look at this. He's got all the way underneath, sprinted all the way through the bottom. Trying to go all uh, the way one, around. Two, even so three. That he died in what about a second? And then that, that is Overwatch League. Like people don't tend to miss their shot. If you get hit once, uh and if you are out in the open, you're gonna get hit another two, three times. Right? You're probably gonna get hit another two, three times. It's not like it's not even like Grandmaster rank or anything. In ov like in rank games, people are inconsistent, right? Even the people that are good at aiming, sometimes they're inconsistent. They hit one time, you kind of AD a little bit, they miss their second shot, you get away with half HP. That happens a lot. But in Overwatch League, if you're picking, and if the other player is good enough, and so I regard Soon as one of the best hit scans, right? Soon is a really was a really good tracer. He learned video, he picked up really, really quickly, and is probably one of the top, the the the, the best McCree in the Overwatch League. Like I think I would say I'll go so far to say he's like top five McCree in the Overwatch League. So yeah. Deleted Jingmo straight out. And it's, it, you know, Amon's still doing nothing yet. It's not his fault. He's just trying to set up in position. It's just, just they're just getting shot on by Paris Eternal. Uh, Soon is probably getting damage boosted as well. So, oh yeah, you can see he's getting damage boosted. You can see the blue arrow. So, like I said early on, Cruz is going to be dam uh, damage boosting soon all the way. Just pocketing soon. Uh, they're playing Anna, so the Anna actually is the one that heals the tank. But Cruz is the one that will be pocketing soon. Cruz is on pocket duty. I'll have to use this res here early. Jimmy's down. Yeah, that's what happens when you're going for that res there on the KOU. Yeah, so uh, another interesting thing, the Winston and the Diva is walking to this area. So they are they're going to be controlling this area in the map, and then the rest of the team will be here. So you have two people here, four people here, right? So if Amen, if Amen pushes up to the, the back line, uh, the Diva and the Winston will jump back. What I think Amen can do is he could disengage, right? If everyone's still alive, I think he might want to try to power driver like the, the Diva. He might want to try the power driver and roll out, but since they're one man down, he probably wants to disengage. Alright, so he goes for like the power driver on the Diva. Right, so he goes for like the power driver on the Diva. 
res there on the Kyo. You have Jinmu get taken out in the sky. Uh, Evil Tail can only be in so many places at once. He can only oh. resurrect one person. Or have Jinmu get taken out in the sky. Uh, they're diving. They're diving the Zen. Was it a good dive from Paris Eternal? <sighs> Evil Tail can only be in so many places at once. I mean, they did it because they were they were up, they were up players. Yeah, Fincy actually killed Kyo, so they got they got the Zen. Yeah, it's a good dive. But Aiming, I think it, this is more or less perfect play from Aiming. Do you guys see this? Oh. But this is, I think, pretty much perfect play. So if I was the Hammond, right? I'm, I'm, a, I'm a master player, right? And, and I have a Hammond one trick account in Masters. If I was the Hammond player, what I've done is is probably like shoot the Winston here. So like right here. Yeah, I'll, I'll probably have shot the shot whoever was discarded here. Right, I'll probably just go like, whoa. Just shoot whoever is here, but Aiming is gonna power, uh, He's gonna hook in. He's gonna try to push the people towards his Sombra, and his Sombra is gonna get off the heck. And he's actually gonna trade the Divas Mech for the Zen. So. Uh, Evil Tower can only be in so many places at once. He can only oh. resurrect one person at a time. Vinci does the same thing again. He just goes up on the high ground, charges in, gets rid of Kyo, and you have to say that's worth it. Giving up his Mech, two kills on the enemies in Yada. The Hunters haven't been able to get off the starting block yet. You do still have some long range damage though being put down now by Jinmu. They have even getting a pile driver kill there on the Finzi. That's gonna get res right up though. Faker Jack really trying to harass. He's fully flanked. He's almost begging Soon to try and challenge him. Now Soon gonna try and use a period of absence from Bacon Jack to apply more pressure to the point. Oh, he got away. Got stunned there pretty hard, but again, that adaptive shield man <laughs> keeps him alive. He's surrounded by more people. He gets more shield, but great. Finds the finish. It's a three man EMP though. Cloudy was hit hard by that one. This he actually. Uh, Paris actually, uh, Eternals actually should really should they really need to force their way out. They really really need to force their way out because if they stay here, right, they're gonna die sooner or later. They have like you have the seven six coming back. Okay, the Bacon Jack died, but you have the seven six setting up. You have the Farah setting up, and it is really really easy to rain rockets. It's not as easy for for Macri to hit uh to hit his shots. So they need to they need to try to control uh two areas. So they either need to okay. So there's three areas here, right? There's one, two. And this third area, which is the high ground on, on the left. You need to control at least two two of these uh, areas. So for example, this is one, area one. Okay, you know I'm just gonna I'm just gonna write area one, area two, area three. You need to control at least two. Uh, you need to try to control one minimum and try to vie control for the other two. Uh for, for, for one more. So for example, you, you can just see if you sit here, you're gonna lose. Just, you're just gonna lose. There's no way you don't lose. Uh how do you lose? Well, this is gonna get more value every single second. In terms of raw damage output, in terms of like the options they have, it's just way more than you, right? So if they have like 50 options and you have 10 options, you're going to lose because they're always going to be able to pick the optimal option. It's kind of like you going to an exam, right? You, you're going for like a math exam. You guys are back in high school. You have to go for an exam, right? And then op there's an option A, B, C, D. And, you know, you get A, B, C, D. The other guy gets A and B or something. And both of you like... You, you studied equally as hard. It's going to be way easier for him because he only has two options, right? Or, or maybe I give you like 10 options, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then, I don't know, like option one to option 10, and that guy has like four options. Even if you studied as much as him, it, it's just going to be harder for you because he can, he has more options available. He can like, not more options, but he can just solve like the exam a lot uh, uh, more, uh, uh, he can just solve, it's just a lot easier for him, right? So if you stay in lobby, that's exactly like the guy with, Okay, maybe that. Okay, I'm not good at analogy, but I guess if you stay here, you're the guy with a lot of options in the MC <laughs> in the MCQ. Holy shit, I'm not good at analogy because my analogy is like the inverse of what I what I mean. Okay, the point is you do not want to stay in lobby. It's bad to stay in lobby. Uh, you want to be able to control. So Paris Eternal wants to maybe put a Macri here, right? While being able to still fight this area. So maybe they want their their Winston and their Diva to push out here while having like a Macri sneakily just flanking something like that. So they want a fight to happen here while they have a Macri over there, but it's not gonna happen. And aiming this 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 guy, this chat. Look at this guy. Look at look at his outcharge. He's like sixty percent here, sixty percent right. So so right now Paris has the point. So. They just want to push in, but he can't. So he rolls away, rolls away, rolls away, gets an AWP, gets a, the, the, the thing. He's gonna go back, he's gonna hook his way in. He's gonna hook his way in. He's gonna power driver. He doesn't even power driver all the way in. So if you see how he power driver, right? And this is, this is, uh, it's pretty basic Hammond play. Instead of power driving over here, he power drivers over here. So if you power driver over here, uh, 
you, you still get healed. You still get, like, people being able to see you. Because if you power driver, like, one meter in, it's more likely you're gonna die because you have to travel one meter more when you want to retreat. So he power drivers to the side. To try and challenge him. Yeah, he still gets, like, at least two people, I think. And, and his, his teammates can still see him. So there's still line of sight between him and his teammates, right? He, the Zen the Zen op still gets him and everything. So there's good distancing. And this time he's going to get his out. And using his mind, he's going to try to zone Paris. So Amen is not really not trying to kill anyone. He's really just trying to farm his minds. He's trying to disrupt. He's trying to get his minds as quickly as possible and use his minds to split this area so that Paris Eternal will almost always not be able to fight for uh, two areas. They can only play in lobby, right? They can only play in this area. And, and as long as they keep playing this way, uh, Chengdu uh, will get what they want. Stunned there pretty hard, but again, that adaptive shield. He's just gonna mine and try to separate both of them. More people, he gets more shield, but great finds the finish. Just a three man EMP though. Cloudy was hit hard by that one, but he's kept alive at least for long enough. The eternal still control the point at 32%. The keeper contested, and Jinmu is out of the mix. Out by a break, nonetheless. Bow. <laughs> yeah, you have Jinmu getting res right up. Cruz will res up Cloudy, so. Cloudy does have primal rage potentially use here is <laughs> it's so annoying dude like I I'm getting tilted watching Amen play dude I I'm not I'm not even playing against him I'm just a coach and I'm getting tilted watching him play all right Jingwu Jingwu needs to stop <laughs> Jingwu needs to stop feeding oh he has barrage okay oh man I think he barrage and he got killed by the bomb unlucky Aiming is aiming is trying his hard hardest to carry. Oh man, dude. Uh, where was Jingmu actually? Did Jingmu? Hmm. I mean, I guess we're not looking at Jingmu play, but yeah. I think Jingmu is playing a little bit too far. Yeah, I feel like Jingmu is playing way too far. Like Jingmu is playing somewhere here. Jingmu is playing somewhere here, like this area. Oh. He's playing like this area, but he should be playing this area, like in the air closer up. Because yeah, I think I just think he needs to put more pressure. This place is like a really small map. As Eamon goes in, he needs to put in pressure. And of course, soon we'll be able to hit him. But the point of Farah is you need to it's like it's like a it's like a risk reward thing. You need to choose that very moment where I can push in aggressively and stay in that position, try and get as much value as possible. You can't always like play long range. Because if you try to play long range, you're not you're just not gonna be able to hit as many direct rockets. And and all these while Eamon is creating all this space that that really gets that doesn't really doesn't get as as much value, so yeah, Jingmu needs to play a lot more aggressive here. Actually, dies to shadow burn. Come on, man. What's Eamon doing? He's trying his best. He's so good at Hammond. Yeah, he's he's really good at Hammond. <laughs> On the point, they won't be shifted, and Chongdu, all they're doing is blowing hot air. The point does end up. Dude, I think Imung put as close to perfect as he could. Have. They can't just let him retake this one easy. Oh, oh. oh they can set up his mind. There is one another stun. That's two stuns used on the main tank from the Chongdu hunters, and that is finally enough. Yeah. No, but it's ramp shot. Oh, Sunu Jin. Jinmu when he comes, oh, so just getting around pretty quick, but it ramps up quicker. Oh, Sunu Jin. Oh. Jinmu when he oh comes to the side, just getting around the corner, but also goes down, headshot. Soon, two hunters have much left. Wow. It's hard to say what he's really looking for right now, just the, the touch that was required. Elsa needs to get that EMP, it needs to force the cloud that cat out pretty fast though. He might just walk up and EMP if that's what's required here. Primal Rage from Cloudy, that transcendence from Keo doesn't look great on paper, does it? The rest of the Chandu Hunters will push back off the point. Finzi just leaving a deterrent out in front of the point, but Amon finds him no. before he can get back in his mech. And Jinmu wants to go close quarters with his All barrage right. here, but his quarry, Grey, had already been taken down. So now he has a bit more freedom about pushing in. He can save that ultimate for later. Grey's been brought back into the fight, but oh. Paris Eternal had lost control of the point. Oh. They need to retake oh it now. So He's gonna try for a dead over demon from behind, trying! So has to take cover, soon rattling shots off. Forced to translocate with just a sliver of health left and soon he's not able to find a stun. The Sombra properly to this now. And it's been contested by Aim on that wrecking ball. Pile driver down, he was biting grenaded. And that's the point for Paris. Now Chongdu had much longer than the Hunters. They're gonna be able to get Aemon back in the fight. And you're gonna have the Valkyrie being- <laughs> Chongdu couldn't win until Aemon died then after that they started winning. Used here by Cruz though, keeping Paris all topped up. Looks like that's enough for Chongdu, the resurrect there. Far, fine. 
but like they they they, they use... all right um Chengdu just needs to follow up like quicker. They're not really following it fast enough. Like Jingmu and Bacon Jack, they're keeping. They're trying to play. They're just playing way too safe. They need to know when to take risk. Use Aemon so many times to just kind of like get onto the point and you know, have a large HP pool to get onto the point and keep it going. Oh, and nobody else that can you know, have a large HP pool to get onto the point has to come back around. They have nobody else that can. See, I, okay, this one is probably this is probably Aemon's first mistake. You know, have I think. Aiming's like this initiation here by Hammond. I think it would be a good initiation if there's a there's a fire right here. Yeah, I think if there was like a fire right here, I think it might have been a good initiation. But yeah, I don't think this is a good. Have a large HP pool to get onto the. Uh, oh, they are right behind him. No, this is Bacon Jack. So there's a seventy six here. So where is Jingmu? Seventy six is not enough. Like even if you have a seventy six and a a a, a sombra. Point. Back They're not around. dangerous they enough no to, to, to for you to actually risk making a play like that. So there's a Sombra here, and there's Bacon Jack behind him, but it's not sufficient. Sufficient. You 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 really need the Farah to be close. Like I'd rather have like a single Farah here than having like the Sombra and the seventy six. Nobody else that can you know, I go have in. a large HP pool to get onto the point and keep it oh, going. That's dangerous. I mean, you're dice. not gonna live long Look, that. You are playing wrecking ball into a team with two stunners, <laughs> essentially. Oh. <laughs> soon rattles off the headshot just as soon as the flash connects there was no chance for Elsa to get away there but oh. Jack will try a tactical visor but he's uh, facing scrutiny from multiple angles and he will I mean he's choosing to go for the tanks more than the backline because the backline is literally Brick and uh and the McCree and the Anna so it's really risky to go for the backline and the people that are creating space in Paris Eastern is, is actually not the McCree it's actually the tanks right the tanks, the tanks are the one that tries to push out aggressively because the tanks are the one fighting remember we talk about uh, fighting for a different place so you have like Soon uh, playing over here which is area 1 and then you have the tanks fighting for area 2 so 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 what Chengdu what Imeng really needs to do is he needs to try to weaken the two tanks uh, maybe slap a discord up on one of the tanks and which is what he's trying to do and after the tanks are weaker and, and falls back a little bit, he, he wants to go in and power driver with his DPS setting up to, to help him up as much as possible. But that's not really happening. Like he's going I think he's doing generally the right thing. I, I'm just not sure where his DPS are positioned. Uh, I mean, I don't think it's easy for them because Sun is a really good McCree, but they I think they they need to play a little bit more. They need to Yeah, they just gotta be a little bit more brave about uh going about it. Fall. Elsa is resurrected, but it's no closer to his EMP uh, than he was about a minute ago when LH Cloud is just gonna face oh tank Jimu. He gets the killers. Jimu has not got a single barrage. Well, soon finishes off Evil Tal. Down yeah. Can you explain how the best uh how best use mines is my main struggle on him and I usually just deploy them from above and power drive to go for frags. So uh mines it depends on the terrain as well and your team composition, right? In that case, Paris was playing a McCree break and they're playing uh, Winston and Diva, right? So they, they want their Winston and Diva to push up aggressively while you have their backline. You have the backline, the McCree and, and, and the NR staying on the back. So with this kind of composition, with Paris eternal composition, uh, where you're, everyone's either in a clump protecting the McCree or the tanks are pushing out while the rest are protecting the McCree, you almost always want to like try to separate them. You almost always want to zone them. So your, your priority is one, to, to put the mines... Uh, to zone the Macri, uh, to to make life as hard as the for the Macri as possible. That's one. You want to make life a, as hard as possible for the Macri, and uh, two, you want to make sure that the mines sort of stop them from being able to push in the point. So as a Hammond, you know that most of your mines will be in this area. Will be in this area. It will be in this area. You it will not be for pure. Right? You're, you're not gonna mine when the enemy team goes for your backline. You're not you're not gonna mine the enemy tanks. You're you're really just mining this area, so that the Macri almost always have to be really active, and the Macri is feeling like you know the Macri feels a lot of pressure on him. So when you are Macri, uh, when you are Hammond in uh, rank games, uh, then it's the it's kind of similar. You kind of need to find out uh where's the place where you can put the mines with the most amount of influence, and if they are playing something like Farah, Lucio, Mercy, then Hammond might not be the best pick. Because I think Hammond does best if the enemy can't escape your mind easily. So if they have like a Zen, right, and they try to destroy your minds, you know, it's not a bad thing. Because your minds, you, you get your mind, you can get your minds generally really quickly. You can get it like a minute, right? You can charge your minds ultimate in a minute. Transcendence, however, is like a really expensive out. So even if the Zen like trans and try to destroy your minds, it's not a bad thing. It's fine, right? Yeah. 
Uh, it's the same thing with like Reinhardt. If you mine the Reinhardt and the Reinhardt takes a show and starts swinging about, it's not, once again, it's not necessarily a bad thing because the Reinhardt has to stand still, show up, and start to destroy the mine. So he's kind of static. So you can use that time to try to push in uh, when, when the, the Reinhardt is distracted but with clearing the mines. So in ranked games, you could you, your mines is either used to frag, frag out where you just mine the backline and try to kill the backline, or your mines is used as a utility to separate like the tanks from like the backline, or make them waste an ultimate to try to get past your mine, like a transcendence or like a sound barrier. Yeah. So as long as you're trading your your ultimate for something better, it's it's generally like a good thing. Oh. It's just a matter of trying to find one. Is it Advantage of the wrecking ball playing there. very like. Yeah, individual. most of the players in Overwatch League, I actually don't know how they look like. <laughs> right? Like a lot of like. those heroes so, were trying to I do things on their own. I know the Arbata, but I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't see their face. I don't recognize Amon was trying to set things up there with the with the wrecking ball. Bad, dude. I think I that's just where the hunters thrive, where if they can turn the game into like a series of like mini one on ones all over the map, get you spread out, not really. Yeah, he's always going for high ground so that he doesn't need to use hook. He can just power driver. Making as much teamwork. Or so right now, okay, this is actually, this is a different map for Hammond. Like this map as for Hammond. I think Eamon would probably want to use his mines as to frag out. Because just now that map was tighter, right? So his mines, he kind of want to use it to separate the back line from the front line. He wants to use it to isolate targets. But in this case, I think his mines would be best used on uh, 76 or Anna. Uh, and try to kill those two when he mines. Yeah, we, we, let's, let's take a look. That's where they feel like they're just skill. Their raw skill oh. can come through. Soon's a nice change for that though, nice Max. Try. That's exactly what the old rogue... The follow-up is... <laughs> the follow-up is not... It's not enough. I mean, I guess Jingmu can't really follow up. No, 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 no. Wait. Indeed. Raw skill can come through. Spark uh, oriented. That's where they feel like. I kind of want to see Jingmu POV, I guess. I feel like he could push up more. Skill. Their raw skill wrong. can come through. Soon's no stranger to that, though, Matt, because that's exactly what the old Rogue team did. It's exactly the rogue team. how they played before the Overwatch League was even inaugurated. So it's, it's very common for French players to go for that kind of approach. LH Cloudy, nicely oh. done. Nice little pile driver there to secure the kill, and he slinks back to where Cruz will be providing him for healing. It's gonna be Wrecking Ball versus Wrecking Ball here. Cloudy definitely has his work cut out for him. On the high ground there, Bacon Jack. This is, but this map is a little bit better for Chung too, because just now that map, I think it's hard for the Far and the 76. Like both Far and the 76 has to be really, really good. They have to understand exactly how they want to push and pull, right? Uh, for OEC's university. But in city center, this map right here, I think it's just easier because the sidelines are a lot better for Far and 76. So even if you don't push up fast enough, I think it's more likely that uh, you get more value, even if you make like a positional mistake. Pretty com comfortable. I can't remember what happened to this fight, but I'm pretty sure Chengdu should win this just by virtue of having like probably the better Hammond. And uh, yeah. If a Hammond does like way more than the other Hammond, you're just gonna have more space. I'm not saying LH Cloudy is a bad Hammond. Eamon just has like a lot more experience, I guess. For now. He was only really bothered early in the yeah. fight, I suppose, by Cloudy, and he left after he got rid of Kia. The guy is playing this like a ranked match. He's I mean, so the, aggressive. The real thing that Bacon Jack has to worry about is Shadow Burn, and Elsa is able oh. to get it. Kill King's far with rockets. Hot shot it. Oh, oh, he has mines. That's All right, let's see how he uses his mines. Let's see how he uses his mines. Trading for the main tank. He's able to back away and Shadowban found Bacon Jack there. Maybe he would use his mines. I can't remember what happened in this fight. He might not use his mines. It's like 6v5. I feel like Aiming would though. Aiming feels like the kind of player that. And he plays Hammond really aggressively. We're in a rather Let's see. negatively slanted matchup for the Fara, but he is being pocketed. He kind of he wants to use his mines so he can stall as long as possible. And I think Yveta is trying to rest Bacon Jack. So. By Cruz. He's that EMP though. Can yeah, he's going to mines for the NR. He's going to mine to block the NR path. So like I said, his, his mines will be used more as, as a fragging out tool because it's almost impossible to uh, split and isolate anyone. The map is way too big to do that. Next couple players. Kind of meet his mines kind of missed, but... Shadowburn soon and Cloudy all affected. Probably nastiest for the Wrecking Ball here when Fitzy's gonna go for the... Dude, they have three people on Aiming. You have Soon on Aiming, you have the Shadowburn on Aiming, and then you have the, the, the Anna here as Tactical well. Tactical he's found Elsa. Jinmu trying to take refuge inside the small pagoda. But the Eternal had the player advantage, Matt. Now they've got to try and lean into that a little further. But they're going to let Bacon Jack get up on the high ground here. And... Matt, now they've got to try and lean into that a little further. <laughs> I don't know, Jingmu. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know about that one, dude. But they're going to let Bacon Jack get up on the high ground here. And Bacon Jack does Jingmu's have the tactical visor. 
Fossoon, just not enough damage with that pulse bomb. Oh. The damage was reduced anyway, but also the adaptive shield of Aemon. <laughs> this guy's... This guy's hard carrying, dude. Aemon just allowed him just to shrug it off. The hunter... They, they kind of lost all the god, high ground. They so started scary. to rotate back down to the point oh to try and god, finish dude. some of these players off. And Bacon Jack coming up the respawn immediately with his attack which just goes right up to the high ground. Able A true Yota chat would... Hey, food mom, thanks for the tier one, dude. Thanks to see... Glad to see you streaming between your busy schedule. Dude, it's... I'm so, I'm so freaking tired every single night, dude. Because we're having back to back. Uh, for those of you guys who don't know, uh, LA Gladiators, we are fighting um Guangzhou Charge, and then we are fighting Valiant, and it's back to back. And last week we had another back to back schedule, so we are literally having back to back schedule, back to back uh, matches. And I think next week we have another back to back. So it's it's hell on the players. I think I I I think the players have been working really really hard, and yeah, I just feel so touched when I see them working so hard and. I think I think the staff has also been working pretty hard. David is sleeping really little, so uh, yeah, I, I it's just it's just tough for everyone, I guess. And I, I have like really inconsistent sleep schedule. Yesterday I slept at like eight p.m. As I finished my stream, I came back home. I slept immediately, and yeah, and I woke up at like three a.m. or something, and I did I did work, but yeah, it, it, it's really uncomfortable, I guess. I guess once the once this stage is done, once this stage is done, I'm I'm going to Japan with my girlfriend. And um, right now my priority is just to get make sure that gladiators make it into playoffs. I think everyone priorities is that, but I think between stage two and stage three, I'm gonna take like a well deserved break, fly to Japan for like a week, <laughs> fly back before stage three starts. Uh, yeah, kind of kind of excited to go to Kyoto with my girlfriend. I think I'm just gonna be doing a lot of reading there. It's not gonna be one of those intensive holiday. I just kind of just kind of. I just kind of want to take it chill because it's it's so hectic right now. Okay. Anyway, sorry for distracting you guys from tales of John God and his his vacation. So Jing, uh, Aiming is doing a lot. I, I mean, he's he's not on fire or anything, but like you can see from the way he plays, he almost always has a purpose, right? The purpose could be to. And I think that's one of the best thing about playing with. Uh, that's how you see like who are the great players from the from the good players. If you watch like really really good players, like you know Sebiobi on Tracer, when you see them play, they always have an intention. They always have a plan, right? That's like there's like a huge difference. I think there's some Tracer that plays really really like hyper tempo. They go like whoa, 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 whoa. they play really really rapidly. They they blink fast. They deal damage fast. Uh, they they look. I think. Profit is one of the, the examples of like a really good uh, tracer that plays at a really high tempo. I think Effect is another example of like a really good tracer that plays with a really high tempo. Sibiobi is like a different tracer. When you look at Sibiobi, he, he looks like someone playing chess. Like every single blink, he has a plan for every single blink, right? That blink is to bait out tra the enemy tracer blink. Uh, he blink because he knows the enemy tracer has one less blink than him. He knows the enemy tracer has to blink to match his blink. And he's able to force the recall because he's tracking the blink. That sort of stuff. Like that's why... People say CBOB was one of the best, one of the best one versus one tracer duelies. Right, he almost always wins tracer one v one because because he, he plays really well. I think another, another <laughs> it makes me remember like Sinetra, uh, saying like something like CBOB. I can't win CBOB. CBOB always has harmony or I, I don't know whether you guys remember that. Like, it it almost became a meme. And you know, CBOB is that kind of tracer player where he's really, really like method, uh, methodical and, and he always has a plan with every single thing. And I think Aemon is kind of that sort of player as well. Uh, he's not the kind of player that just goes in really aggressively and, and requires a lot of resources. In fact, I think Aemon requires very little resources because he's good at what he does. He know when he goes in, he knows that he's going in for only the 76. He knows he's trying to go for like, uh, he's trying to assassinate the, the Anna. He knows he's trying to uh, peel the tanks. He knows he's trying to uh, damage the tanks and put pressure on the tanks. So he has a really clear idea of what he needs to do and what he's gonna do. Pick up two. We've seen this happen at teams before. Trying to play Chongdu's game. To get this is the the scariest kind of player, by the way. This kind of players that plan, and, and and is really good at one character. Lost in a haze of bloodlust, and they wake up with the loss message on their screen. They've got to keep it together, but shut up. So you know, right here, you know, some if you see aiming, sometimes he hook up, he hook up, and he tries to power driver to peel. But you know, one thing about Hammond is Hammond's not good at peeling. So after he sees his power driver, right? What he's doing right now, why he's shooting this Hammond is because he wants to think. He, he's thinking, hmm, is there any way we can kill the Hammond? So, it, you know, Hammond's going for a dive. Is there any way we can kill the enemy Hammond? The moment he realizes he can't, 
because you know there are a lot of resources around maybe the mercy can heal the ham and all that kind of thing he's gonna switch his mindset he's gonna go you know what the only way to win this i i thought killing the hammer was the solution but maybe the only way to win this is to assassinate their backline so he turns around and goes for their back blood last and they wake up with the loss message on their screen yeah. so he could have chased the hammer right he could have chased the hammer he was still shooting elish cloudy elish cloudy was discarded uh, elish cloudy moved to the left and he thinks you know uh, I don't think I'll be able to kill the Hammond because uh, the enemy Hammond because you know they have like grey healing the Hammond so he's gonna he's gonna switch tech right if he goes for the Hammond the Hammond's just gonna get pocketed uh, average cards is just gonna get pocketed by grey so he's gonna go for like the two two, two DPS instead and if grey goes for him if grey goes for him and Finzi goes for him there is a chance that someone in Chengdu Hunter gets to kill the Hammond that's no longer pocketed by Anna because Anna is now getting dived on by Aiming. They've got to keep it together, but Shadowburn, oh. that was very classy. Can see, can see, you can see Elsa. Elsa is actually doing it. Elsa is actually going for uh Elsa is actually going for LH Cloudy. So yeah. LH Cloudy should die. Probably would die if like the Zen and the Zen or the uh, the Sun Six is alive, but yeah. So literally their wing con there was, you know, if one of them was alive, they probably would have killed LH Cloudy. So if they killed the Zen and 76 stay alive, this guy would probably die. And it would have been a one for one trade. It would have been like you traded the Hammond for like the Zen and I think Chengdu actually wins it because they, they keep their main tank but in this case LH Cloudy went for the fight uh, both of them actually died so I guess it's, I think it's on these two players I think they, they should okay maybe the Zen dies but I think the 76 should at the very minimum uh, be able to escape from the Farah I don't think both of these players should die to uh, Paris Eternal who I don't think they even use an ult did they Dion boss Four, trying to play yeah, game. they didn't use an ultimate at all they oh they hacked pick and jack so maybe that's why he didn't make it because he, he couldn't sprint right he, a haze of very class. he dies Serena, you too can do that if you go home and shoot training pots <laughs> <laughs> you too can do that if you go home and shoot training pots it was really fast no, oh. most likely you can. still for a couple years that's all. yeah no one said how oh. long it would take interesting right so chong what are they working with here well so why does pick and jack goes Tracer instead of Farah. There could be a couple of reasons. Uh, it could be that Chengdu is, is talking among themselves and they're like saying, you know, we almost killed the Hammond. Uh, our Zen is playing on high ground, so he's playing on high ground. Both of us are getting fucked by the Farah and the, the Sombra. You know what? Let's switch tech. Instead of playing uh, Protect the 76 and Zen, because they were playing on high ground, right? So you kind of want to protect the Bick and Jack and kill. Instead of protecting both of them, they're thinking they want to. They might want to play more aggressive towards uh, the enemy, uh, uh, Anna. So, yeah. And one of the things about 76 is it's really hard to. It's really hard to, like take back a retake a point like it's easy to hold a point when you have it because you have all the high grounds you have like everything uh you have options but the moment you lose the point ss76 is really, really hard to push back you you'll be trying ss76 you'll be trying to push back in and then there's, the file will just be like fucking slamming rockets on you so in some ways a tracer is better uh, in a lot of ways the tracer is better especially when you already lost the fight to them uh there's a large google drive dot 2g wait okay i gotta I gotta read Twitch chat a lot more. I've been crazy busy myself. Jingwu is a suicidal DPS player, as said by the one and only show, side show. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't. Oh wait, Jingwu, yeah, yeah, Jingwu. Ah, uh, I don't think Jingwu is like a suicidal DPS player. I think he just has like a. You know, I I need to, I need to find like a fine line between what I critic critic because I don't want anything I say to be helpful to Chung to. And I'm worried that, like, the more I review that, the more detail I get, the, the more, you know, I mean, there's a chance that Chengdu goes, oh, yeah, we, 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 don't, we didn't recognize that problem myself. Uh, I think there's one thing about coaching, right? We assume that all the, uh, a lot of things we are saying, it's like, it's like common knowledge, but maybe it's not common knowledge. Because I think all the Overwatch League coaches, we operate under a, the same baseline logic. But past that baseline logic, we have very different styles and we have very different opinions on how things play out. So I don't want to give too, too much of, like, too, too detailed an analysis which is kind of one of the sad things about being an overwatch league coach because there's just more at stake and i can't speak as frank uh, i can't be as frank a speaker as like i would have been last year for example you have been crazy busy your team you're coaching is currently 18 in open division hey everyone you congratulate food more congrats 18 is pretty crazy congrats 18 position especially in N I assume you're from na so NA has like 500, 600 teams. 18 position is really, really good. It's like top few percent. Do you really need to prep for the Shanghai Villain? All right. 
we are gonna trade every single opponent like yeah you know how you lose to you know how you lose to like teams that you don't think you should lose to by thinking that they are bad that's how you lose no we're gonna treat everyone like like they're freaking nixel and titans i think that's the way you have to go about it there's, there's no other way to go about it uh ah so guys actually discussing about open div yeah looks like you have a pretty tough weekend coming out foot mob i need to check out open div schedule but yeah I just I, I just want to be able to uh, be updated. Wait, can can you find POV vaults now? There is a large Google Drive doc somewhere around. Yeah, Galaxy brain play in like one second of thinking. Yeah, do you think pl uh, players do these plays by instinct, or are they thinking of all these things at once? And there are a lot of things that you, when you're practicing like a certain character, you need to make conscious decisions, and after that, uh, it becomes automatic. So you know, do you guys play Go? Do you guys what? You guys know what Weighty is? Uh, Mine. Let me try to. Yeah, let me try to. Uh, do you guys know this the game? You guys know this game? It's called it's called Weighty. It's called Go, right? It's it's actually one of like it's a really really complicated game. I, I don't know why you guys know this. It's called Baduk as well. So there's this thing called Sets. Fuck, I can't remember. Is it Tetsuji? Tetsuji, Suji, Tetsuji. I think. So what Tetsuji means is it means uh you know what? I we could just Google it. Is it Tetsuji? Tetsuji. Yeah, Tetsuji. Uh, yeah, okay, so Tetsuji is the, a clever play, the best play in a local position, a skillful move, a special tactic. Uh, Tetsuji comes in all forms of shapes, some are more known than others. So, you know, Tetsuji is like, it's like a common thing, like a common event, like, you know, this thing is a common position. So it's like it's 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 very familiar. If you see the net tetsuji, right? If you see the net tetsuji, you know you're gonna do A B C. If you see the ladder tetsuji, you know you need to do C D F, for example. So it's the same for Overwatch. If you see the NR standing alone, if you see the NR or the Zen standing alone as a tracer, in your head, that's a tetsuji. It's a tetsuji, right? What's the what's the smart play? What's the it's it's a familiar play. They're isolated, so you go for the one on one, and you know you're gonna win the one on one because you're a tracer. So that's a tetsuji. Uh, another tetsuji would be something like uh you are like a Zaya, you see the diva flying in uh defensive matrix uh turn around boom that's a tetsuji you out so players don't need to think about that it's automatic they see the diva turn around in, in their head it's like it's like a switch ping and then you just you just go for the graph but in rank games uh all these tetsuji it's not as obvious in our mind so we actually have to think about it right so before we graph if the diva turns around we have to, we, our in our mind we are like the diva turned around there is no defensive matrix. I'm going to use the graph, right? We have to go through like maybe like half a second more uh, conscious thought. But in pro, in the pro scene, all the are Tetsujis. You don't need to think. You just see and you just do. So does that mean that a player always play uh, like reacts like a machine? C, play, C, play. No, because what they are, uh, what they'll be distracted with, like what do they need to think about is like the more advanced play. Right. That's when they outtrack. That's when they control health packs. That's when they control an area. That's when they start thinking, I need to use my mind to isolate two players in the map. So all the plays that are hard for us, it's Tesuji's for them. And all the plays that are uh uh impossible, like we don't even we can't even think about it because we are distracted with thinking all that stuff. All those plays are the things that they are consciously thinking about. So their Tesuji library is just bigger than us because they play this game for a living and they play it every day. And that's that's Tetsuji for them. Yeah. Uh yeah. Field <laughs> 180 it's your graphs on the last frame of defense metric. Yeah, that's that's just like mechanics, I guess. Transcendence, they're the, the most important ones to come up soon. Gray has a nano boost here. So you can give it to Shadow Burn, he can try and get a, a higher value barrage off, or you give it to Cloudy and he can just not die ever. I mean, I think you can give it to Cloudy and get like that pile driver, right? That does a ton of damage onto his support. Absolutely. And the displacement is also uh, oh, very man, stressing. Oh, man, Jimmy Lowe, Cruz, go for it. Yeah. Okay. He's actually going. Yeah, he, doesn't, he doesn't see an opportunity, so he's just going <laughs> to play. He's just going to play more opportunistically right now. All right. He's decided to back out. He's in Valkyrie right now, so obviously, oh. you know, he oh. won't get stuck yeah. out of line of sight of any teammates there. Sleep down on Paris is is so careful of him. This is keep toying around him, making sure that he doesn't get any power drive, making sure he doesn't get space. As well, he was dealt with very easily by the backline of the Eternal. Gray is traded for it, though. Your screen, but Finzi is hunting. 
they can just you know dip in and gets that health pack and you hear the at least crouch, the turtle yeah? took control of the yeah, point okay, mat okay, so okay, yeah, you guys gotta hear this guy right here. wait what's going on all right can just you know dip in and out of this point jimu killed shadowfell and everyone in the crowd shit <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of funny i guess oh the crowd is going wow He's forced to back out. I mean, Paris is in a point though where the you know the hundreds have so much percentage that they. Tetsuji familiar scenario select win condition create advantage. Yeah, it's a good. Yeah, maybe it's not a good way of explaining. I was explaining. I was talking to. You, I was talking about like how I'm not good with. Uh, I'm not good with analogies. My analogies are fucking horrible. I I, I when I use analogies, I tend to confuse the people more than before I actually use those analogies. So. You know, maybe Tetsuji wasn't like a great way to explain it because that would require uh, a basic knowledge in the bot game. So, never mind. Yeah, maybe it was, a, it was another one of my famous bad analogies. Uh, so, Chengdu wins. 1-1. One, one. Well, they don't win, but, you know. Okay, so this map, right? This map is definitely like a Hammond map. This map this map is a Hammond map. And I, I like that Chengdu is playing... Uh, I like that Chengdu is playing... A tracer instead of 76 because when you play 76 and far right when you play Perry's version of 76 and far it's i think it's really really strict like you need to put a lot of resources in protecting these two players you need to put a lot of resources in protecting these two players and i think aiming is a good hammond but the hammond isn't designed to peel a hammond isn't designed to peel a hammond is designed to engage and and and, and wreck havoc in the back line so even though a, a hammond can sort of peel a little bit it's just hard for him to roll backwards and power driver the tank line it's better for him to just go for the the dps so i i actually kind of like this uh approach by bacon jack and elsa i'm not too sure about kill playing moira i kind of feel like this is just like a uh, it's interesting it's, it's, it's interesting i guess i assume he's playing moira because he's not playing i mean most people in this situation they play lucio mercy but maybe Kyo is not a Lucio player. I'm actually not sure. Yuvieta is the Lucio player. I think this guy is the Lucio player. So instead of playing Lucio, which he might not be good at, he's going to play Moira. Uh, as a Moira, he can be like a second DPS. This map is like a really tight map as well. So you, you uh, Moira actually does quite a lot here. It's an interesting pick though. This reminds me of like Contenders because in Contenders, I actually created a strat uh, where I played like Mercy Moira. And I think we were the only team that does it. So this brings back familiar... Uh, memories because most people go like you know in content as most people go like we need defensive ultimate but maybe you don't because you can cheese your way through and i think cheesing is like it's really really it's really really <laughs> beneficial in contenders when you cheese most teams in contenders are not very flexible but i'm not i'm not here to talk about like memories of my past um, or con of con all contenders we're here to look at a great and glorious chat aiming so let's continue with aiming He's the, you know you know what Amang is doing? He's looking for the Anna. You know what he's doing? He's, he's looking for the fucking Anna. <laughs> it's like, where's Anna? Where's Anna? Anna's probably... I think he thinks that Anna is like in the staircase here somewhere. So he's moving in. Where's Anna? Where's Anna? So that the tracers... <laughs> Do you know what, you know what Bacon Jack is doing? Bacon Jack's not even... Like, he's literally behind Amang. He's literally like right <laughs> Generally, the tracer don't play with the hammer. The tracer goes out to set up, but... Because Aiming is playing in the, the flank path that he wants, Bacon Jack is right here. <laughs> he actually turned around to check whether Bacon Jack was following him. Yeah, Chengdu is try. I mean, I think Chengdu doesn't have like the best teamwork. And I don't want to say it because I think it comes back and bite me in the butt if, if they actually beat L if they, if they beat LA Gladiators. And we, I mean, yeah, but I think Bacon Jack is... I think the teamwork isn't like... They're still working on their teamwork, just like how we are working on ours. So Bacon Jack following Aiming means that I guess you definitely have follow up because your follow up partner is literally following you. <laughs> it's kind of cute. It's kind of cute. Like your, it's like your little brother that tags along, you know. So he's going for the Anna. He's going for the Anna. All right, hard engage, hard engage. Oh, one of the things that at Island is Hammond, right? Is is you don't even need to. Uh, uh, you, you don't even. You just need to roll. Like you don't need to swing. Like right here, if you want to power driver inside, you don't need to like do any hooks. Just roll out. If you roll fast enough. You fly over the the the, the staircase because of you know, rule uh the rules of uh inertia, 
and you can power driver so you can just roll off the stack and just power driver it's really really quick as well it's really really hard to counter because there's no normally one of the the, the, the thing about power driver is everyone sees you coming right because you you hook in you're like i sing like a wrecking ball everyone sees you coming from like a mile away especially if your hook trajectory is like really long but if you do this kind of play and so, in some terrain you can do this kind of play it's actually really really hard, hard to expect and you can just burst like a 200 hp character down to like nothing look at grace hp look at grace hp okay this is already at half but Oh, it's full. Oh, pow. Pam. Dead. That was all aiming, by the way. Like, I don't even think the Tracer helped him much. I don't think Pick and Check. Look, look at that. It's just 30% on her aiming. This guy's a monster. He's going out. He, oh, he's going for the back line. He's flanking more than his Tracer, dude. Oh. Pow. And this is my favorite place to play as well. Dude, they're losing. Chuck is actually losing. What do you mean they're losing? What the fuck? What do you mean they're losing? Everything is trying to carry you guys. Back up, guys. Oh, man. Oh, oh. I'm, I'm like, cheering for Emang, dude. I, I don't know. I'm like a huge Chengdu supporter. Everything that they do uh, is just so entertaining to watch. But mainly it's because of Emang, but it, they're kind of the underdog, so you almost always cheer them. I mean, they're not really underdog anymore. I think everyone has like a way higher expectations of them this stage. Alright. This is something we all know how to do, all right? Overwatch League player or not, 2,500 SR, 1,500. This is something we know. We all know that. Let's watch that again. Splendid rotation. Very safe response there, Mr. Cole. That's what came off like my my media lessons. Oh, oh what what's this my fault? What's this my fault? Oh, okay. It's, it's to split the NR. It's to split the NR. Yeah. It's to make sure. Yeah, it's, it's, he's gonna, like, he's not mining here. He's mining here. So he's mining this area. So it's to split the NR. So the NR can only walk in this area. And to get out of the mines, he has to, like, walk the long way around. Yeah. See, I, I, I won't be able, like, I, I, I might be able to see these kind of things, but there's no way I would be able to, like, execute these sort of plans. In, 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 in a high high pressure situation. Yeah, it's the split the NR. He's yeah. He's just putting the NR right there. He's going for the NR now. Where's the NR? Oh NR is dead to the tracer. He used his mice a lot to split people up. And I think it's really, really hard to do. Like for lesser mortals like us, we can do that, but you know, we need to think, we need to plan, we need time to to set up, but this guy just, just he just looks around, he sees the the people around him, he knows the perfect mice to do just by looking one time, just as he rolls. A big, what can I say? I'm a big fan of this guy. Oh, he got hacked. Feels bad. Soon is you know. Aiming is trying to hack, he's trying to carry Chengdu. In Paris Eternal, Soon is trying to carry them. <laughs> Battle of the carries. Oh. Force the translocator. Literally use a hook and a power driver just to force the translocator. That, that ought to tell you how dangerous Soon is. For Aiming, the great Aiming, to, to spend two of his mighty cooldowns to force the translocator from Soon. Oh man. You know, Grey is not having a. Uh, easy time this is why a lot of people play like this is one of the advantage of playing a lucio and a mercy if you play a lucio you almost never can go for the back line but if you play an anna right uh you you do a lot more but it's a really greedy pick because you know it's so much easier to die so you know, great. Right? Technically, Anna is hard to play. Does more than Moira supposedly, but he's just dying of an kill. You know, you are Moira. You're unkillable. Just running around contributing to the team fight as much as you can without dying. So. And we're at Paris. Well, really, the, they're in a death knell right now. And Cloudy had the nano boost and done something again. Just uses the bait of Moira. Just get away. Then you offer. The yeah. Then, then they win, right? The EMP, they wait. Nice cap precision. They threw and they, yeah, they win this. Now I want to see how how many coalescence did Kyo get. I don't think he got that many. One coalescence. Oh, he was holding it for a really long time. 
was interesting. Okay. Just when we think Amang is doing poorly, he pops another super candy. Bumper is my spirit animal, but Amang is the main tank I look up to. Nice catch, I didn't notice the end until point. Oh. He's good at keeping range from hex and being effective at disrupting the fights. Imang is a god brawler, yeah. I mean, what Imang is really doing is he, he sort of understands, like, he sort of knows approximately where the, the, the Sombra is and he tries to stay away from uh, the, the area of where the enemy Sombra is. But most of them, as a Hammond, uh, you, you, you can't do much to stop hex. Like, you kind of just want to do your own stuff. Uh, you can't, you want to do min, you want to try to be aware of the sombra minimally, but you're not gonna go your way uh, out of your way just to avoid the sombra because it kind of restricts where you play as a Hammond. So you just want to play as quick, uh, you just want to play as high tempo as possible. If you power drive like four or five times, he hacks you once. You know it's gonna happen. And you're not gonna play Hammond in, into a sombra, and you you can't expect never to get hacked. It's it's literally impossible. So you're gonna get hacked. But what you can do is you can maximize the value you get before you get hacked. And that has a lot to do with like strategies, terrain, rollout, set play. And I'm not going to go into that because once again, you know, maybe I could have done it last year, but I definitely can't do it this year as an Overwatch League coach against a, a team that I might need to, I will definitely need to fight in this stage. Okay, so I am going to stop here for today. So a summary of what Amen does well, right? A summary of what Amen does well. He is very, very aware of the things around him. And that's, I think, a trait that many main tanks, a good Winston player has. He, he, he kind of like, as he moves along, he kind of takes like a snapshot and he keeps in his mind where everyone is, where the, NR, uh, uh, the enemy ham and everyone is. And then he decides whether he wants to uh, go for the tank, whether he wants to peel for the tank, or whether he can actually go for a power driver kill. And unlike uh, rank Hammond, where a lot of rank Hammond, they, they, they are reliant on their power driver, Amen is not reliant on his power driver. Right? He, 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 he knows when to hook in without using his power driver. He knows when to play 76. He knows when to play a Hammond like a 76 where he just fires his gun at the closest people that's discarded. And he knows when to do... Uh, I'm not sure whether you guys heard it, but I kind of farted. But my mic... My mic is a good mic, so maybe it picked it up. It's like a natural human thing. But, uh... Yeah...